Good evening. I want to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to us uh, for our evening worship. Uh, if you would, make sure to silence any cell phones or any type of noisemaker that would uh, uh, do any uh, disruptions for someone around you. I do have just a few announcements that I'll go ahead and make all of them now. Keep Loretha Wallace in your prayers. She's having some health problems. Uh, she was having some health problems this morning. Keep Teresa Hampton in your prayers. She's in the hospital with pneumonia. Continue to pray for Sue Barnett as she uh, has some health problems and is uh, continuing to improve. Sylvia Parrish is in the Baptist Hospital with high blood pressure and inner ear trouble. Doug Cockroft, Annette Parrott, uh, Jenny Lane are all recovering from surgery, and uh, I see Annette with us today, so it's good to have you back with us. April Jameson was baptized into Christ this past, well, yesterday, Saturday afternoon, by her dad, Joey, so we rejoice in, in that good news. Uh, raise your hand back there, April. Y'all make sure you get to, uh, to see April and, and uh, hug her from a distance. Six-foot hug. Parents and teens, the live retreat is April 23rd through the 25th. It's getting close. At Sardis Lake Christian Camp, if you plan to attend, please sign you and your family up tonight. There's a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Now, I'm going to stress tonight. So make sure at uh, closing prayer, if you plan on being involved in this, go to the foyer, put your name on the list. Early risers will be uh, Tuesday, April 6th at 7 a.m. in the downtown, downtown, in the da uh, downstairs uh, fellowship hall. Tuesday, April the 6th, the youth TNT, I think that means Tuesday and Thursday or something like that. That's Tuesday night together in the house of Colin and Alicia Middleton at 6 p.m. I encourage all parents of the youth to make sure your child is there. If for some reason you cannot get your child there, let uh, Logan know. And if have to, we'll drive to your house and pick them up and take them to Colin Middleton's house. So we expect every single person in our youth group, even the parents can go to that uh, gathering at Colin and Alicia Middleton's house at 6 p.m. And this is the April the 6th, which is Tuesday night. There'll be a ladies' tea next Sunday at 3.30 p.m. in the downstairs fellowship hall. All ladies are invited to our young ladies, as our young ladies uh, lead songs, read scripture, and deliver their speeches. So we want to really uh, stress that for all our ladies to be there to encourage our young girls, and all that they do. Let's have a prayer as we begin. Most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this opportunity to come back this afternoon and to hear your word, sing praises to you, and just enjoy the fellowship of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We thank you so much, Father, because we know that you're always with us and guiding every step. We pray, Father, that we do everything we can to, uh, to please you, whether it's in our worship or whether it's in our a home life. We pray, Father, that you'll help us to be a light to someone else, that it will plant that seed that uh, can be watered and, and to grow for your kingdom. We thank you so much, Father, for this evening. We pray that you'll be with all those that are listed and needing uh, support through prayers. We pray, Father, that you'll continually guide our lives in everything we do. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Number 615, we we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. We have heard the joyful sound.
55. Say all three verses, then we'll have some extra prayer. Wonderful story of love. Merciful Father, we come before thee, Father, as humbly as we know how. Thank you for another opportunity to hear another portion of your word. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ and that sacrifice that he made on the cross at Calvary, Father, so that we may have opportunity to receive eternal life. We thank you, Father, for the church which he purchased with his blood. We pray, Father, that it will continue to shine, Father, the light, Father, amongst darkness in this world. Dear Father, we want to pray for our leadership here, Father. We just pray, Father, that they will continue to be encouraged, Father, as they are. Uh, Keep watch, Father, out for this congregation, Father, for well-being. Dear Father, we want to pray for the ones that just recently had surgery, Father. Pray for the ones in the hospital, Father. We just pray, Father, that they may receive a good portion of their health and strength. Dear Father, we just pray that you will be with us throughout the furtherance of this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Song of, uh, hello. Song of Invitation will be number 671. 671, you can mark that in your books. Oh, my mouth spoke before my head. Uh, six, uh, 662. 662, this will be our song before uh, the lesson tonight. Sing verses 1, 2, and 4. Years I spent on vanity and pride. Caring not, my Lord was crucified, knowing not what fruit for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free.
All right, good evening. It is good to be with you tonight. Uh, no, I'm not uh, Brother Gary. Uh, he is, I believe, at, at home this evening. And so uh, just please continue to keep Miss Teresa in your ongoing prayers. Uh, if you would like a copy of the handout, I know uh, we probably should have said this earlier, but uh, there are a few that are out there in the foyer on the table uh, out there where the Lord's Supper is at. And so if you just really want something to, to write on or to follow on with the lesson, there are a few copies of that out there uh, that we made separate from the Sunday handout. And so uh, please uh, help yourself to, uh, to that. So I had a little fun with the title. And I, I know I've been around a lot of preachers or probably too many preachers. Because when I was looking in Titus chapter 2 and verses 11 through 15, uh, there in the heading uh, in, in the New King uh, James uh, Bible that I read from, uh, it, talk, it talked about uh, grace being the teacher and uh, th- there in the heading. And I just said, you know what? I have to call, I have to call this sermon, His Grace Teaches Me. Now, I know probably when you heard that, you might have been just like me. Maybe that means I'm a nerd, but I I thought about the song, His Grace Reaches Me. Uh, And so that's kind of where this lesson came from tonight. His grace teaches me. You know, there in Titus chapter 2, Titus being this this young man in the faith that's being encouraged by, uh, uh, by Paul, and he's being encouraged to really do some encouraging of his own. To do some teaching, to do some edifying, to do some uplifting, uh, to help people in the faith to come to know what is true, what is sound doctrine, especially in that second chapter there. In that second chapter there of Titus, he's trying to help encourage people to know what true sound doctrine is and to know how to teach that from generation to generation. In fact, when I was working with the youth, Titus chapter 2 was someplace I turned all the time because... We as people that are established in the faith, we owe it to our children to be teaching them the things they need to know about God's word. We owe it to future generations to help them to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ to have that same blessing that we once had when we were taught about Jesus. And so you come through that section and you get down to verses 11 through 15, which is where we'll spend most of our time tonight. And we're going to think about this title, His Grace Teaches Me. Looking there in verse 1 of chapter 2, I mean, verse 11 of chapter 2, it says this, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. So when we think about this idea of His grace teaches me, this is one point I want us to to pull out of this. It teaches me that salvation is available. That salvation is literally available for all of mankind. We know the famous Bible passage in John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. We know this passage But do we truly believe it? Has his grace, has the grace of God revealed to us and shown to us through his word and through the faith that salvation is available? For those that might be here that are outside of Christ or listening to us online, salvation is available for you. If you are outside of Christ and you want to be free from your sin, that can happen in Christ Jesus. If you are here and if you are listening and you're in Christ, then salvation is for you also. Salvation has been for you uh, and has been planned for you since before the foundation of the earth. And when you decided, when you became an obedient child of God and put him on in the water grave of baptism, that salvation was secure. That salvation was yours. But that salvation has to be held on to. That salvation has to be grabbed hold of and held on to for uh, for dear life because, yes, it's a gift, but we have to keep working in it. We have to let our salvation work, and we have to put in that work. And so whether you're outside of Christ or whether you're in Christ, we need to know this. Salvation is available. Now, what do we need saving from? Romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and Romans 6, 23 shows us that we need to save him from our sins. 
For all of sin have fallen short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? It's eternal life. We can have that gift. Salvation is available. Now, like we said, we needed saving because of our sins. Those that are outside of Christ need saving because of their sins. And so since salvation is available, and since the majority of us in here tonight are already in Christ, then what are we going to do with it? Not only is salvation available for us, but salvation is available for other people. So I would say this, we need to be sharing the message of that salvation to the world. We need to be sharing a message that we, like, like we read in Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, where it says, But God demonstrated his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We need to hear that. The world needs to hear that. They need to hear that salvation is available for them, that there is a way that they can get their sins washed away, and there's a way for them to have that eternal life. Now, a lot of people, when they talk about salvation uh, in, in the world, and especially in denominations, they will turn to a passage like Romans 10 and verse 9. And I hate that we misuse Romans 10 and verse 9 because it's a great passage, and it has a lot of good meaning. Romans 10 and verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So some might decide they're going to twist this verse to say, see, you know, here I can just accept the word in my heart and I can just, you know, say some sort of prayer and I can go on and be saved. That's not really what this verse is saying here. In fact, when you read about salvation in its entirety in the entire New Testament, you're going to see that salvation, salvation has several things that we need to do, uh, but has to be appealing to God so that God will save us. We don't save ourselves. God is the one that saves us. And so we see here the Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 9. If, if we don't talk about just confessing Christ, some people will talk about grace. Well, here's another passage about grace that I think is really important for us to talk about in this subject of salvation. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Yeah, we're saved by grace. We're saved by grace through faith. Still available, but we must have faith. We must be obedient. And so, how do we get this faith? Well, those of us that are already in Christ, I think most of us already know that, but just as a review, we look at like Romans 10 and verse 17. So faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. If we want to have faith, we need to be, need to be people of the Word. That was true before we got into Christ, and the same is true if we want to continue to have faith today. We need to be people that are of the Word. We need to realize that our faith, that part of our faith is, is believing in God and believing in Him. So we look in passages like in Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16, really verse 16, and it says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. We need to believe in order to be saved. So you might be thinking, well, I've already done this. I've already put Christ on in baptism. I've done that many years ago. But do you still believe what you believed back then? Has your belief grown? Has it developed? Has it matured? Have you shared that belief with those that are outside of Christ? See, salvation is available. It's available for all. If we've already grabbed hold of it, then we need to be sharing it. Sharing passages like Mark 16, 15, and 16. Sharing with other people about our beliefs and about how we came to have our sins washed away. What about repentance? Repentance is really important when we talk about salvation. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3 Luke chapter 13 and verse 5 really says the same thing. I tell you no, but unless you repent... You will all likewise perish. That's a true statement for those that are outside of Christ. It's also a very true statement for those that are in Christ. That if we fail to repent and we fail to come back to God and, and fail to return to Him, then we're going to perish. We don't want to perish. We want to grab hold of salvation for the first time and we want to hold on to it for the rest of our life. 
Salvation is available. 2 Peter 3 verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We need to hear that. We need to know that the Lord has given us the time that we have to repent, to come back. It's his. We give it back to him. If we've yet to come to Christ, we need to know that we can repent. If we've already come to Christ, we need to know that we can keep on repenting. Because if we fall into sin again, we need to repent. We see here that salvation is is truly for all. Matthew 10, 32 uh, says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my fathers in heaven. Confession is an important part of us having our sins washed away and being saved. Now, for us in the church, oftentimes we talk about salvation, we turn to Acts 2, 38. In fact, I've seen t-shirts with this plant, uh, and printed on the back. Acts 2, 38. If it's not Acts 2, 38, they'll put the, 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 the slogan 728B. And pretty much everybody knows what both of those uh, you know, are, if you're in the church. 728B is, is one of the anthem songs of the, of the church, churches of Christ. Acts 2.38 is probably the most quoted passage uh, that, that, uh, among us Christians. Then Peter said to them, repent and, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Are we teaching People, about repentance, about baptism. Do we still believe in it? Do we believe in it like we did the day we were baptized? Do we believe in it like the day that, that our children had their sins washed away? If we do, we need to be sharing this with other people. If we're not in Christ, right here, this is the way unto salvation to have our sins washed away. We need to realize something, church. And that is, we must remain faithful to God. We need to grab hold of that salvation. We need to hold on to it for all eternity uh, until the Lord comes back. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, we see, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. I want that crown of life. I hope you want that crown of life too. Salvation is available. Matthew 7, 21, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. See, salvation is available. There's something that we must do. We must be obedient to his word. We must be obedient to get into Christ, and we must continue to be obedient to stay within that fellowship. So that's one lesson we learn here from the grace of God. Let's move on to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2 and, and going down into verse 12. And just the first part. It says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Titus chapter 2 verse, uh, verse 12. It, it starts out, it's talking about us denying ungodliness and lust. You see, yes, salvation's available, but... There's things in this world that we as Christians cannot participate in, that we can have nothing to do with. And we actually have to put measures into place to deny the things that are of this world. If that was in our past and that was part of all the things that we were a part of, we can no longer be a part of those things. We have to deny ungodliness and lust. If it is in something new that has creeped into our life and we have, have succumbed to sin and we've, you know, fallen to those temptations, then we have to once again deny ungodliness and these lustful things. When we think about temptation, think about passages of James chapter 1 and verse 14. It says, when each one is tempted, he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. See, these things of worldliness, these things of lustful, of the lustful nature, we get drawn in because we want to be drawn in. Or we get drawn in not because we want to be drawn in, because we want those things at that moment. We allow ourselves to be drawn in, and therefore we are. Now, that doesn't make it easy. It's difficult at times. But we have to put the work in to actually do the denying 
to actually put something in place that is going to aid us in this measure and in this help and in this way. Now, one of the best things you can put in the way of sin is right here in the word of God. That if you find yourself falling prey to sin time and time again, then maybe it's time to turn back to the word. I know oftentimes when I talk to people about their sin problems and things going on in their life, they've tried to handle it by themselves. They've tried to put in just practical applications and practical methods that are going to keep sin away. And those practical things are good. But those practical things will never overcome the word of God. We need to deny ungodliness and lust. First John chapter 2 and verse 16 says, For all those in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And we need to deny these things. If we're looking for a lengthy list of works of the flesh, you can turn to Galatians chapter 5 and verses 19 to 21. There in that list of all these terrible and horrible sins, maybe we look into that list and we see our former self. Maybe we see the self we were last week. Maybe we see something that we're dealing with right now. Whatever the case may be, we need to deny ungodliness and lust. We need to seek after righteousness. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. You see, here's the thing about sin. Not only do you have to deny sin and put sin down, but you've got to put something in its place. And the thing you put in its place is God. We need to be people that are denying ungodliness and lust and seeking after God. Now, Titus doesn't just leave us here with denying ungodliness. He actually goes on and tells us that we need to live soberly, righteously, and godly. It says that in Titus chapter 2, in the last part of verse 12, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So we think about that. How do I live soberly and righteously and godly? Think about passages like Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 8. You know, we, we already talked about saved by grace through faith. But think about that. We've been saved by grace through faith. By who? By God. God did the saving. God saved us because we were faithful, because we were obedient. But God did the saving. We need to remember our place there before God. Now, another aspect to think about when you think about soberness is thinking about this self-control. Think about this control over, over that person, over that, thyself. Think about Galatians 2 and verse 20, which says, I've been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. If we want to be self-control, and we want to be sober before God, we have to truly give our lives over to him. We have to be, be like it says in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verses 13 th uh, through 16, where it says, Therefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully on the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, but he who called you to be to called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy. For I am holy. We need to be people that are sober, that are righteous. You want to try to be righteous? You want to try to be right before God? To look at places like the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 uh, and 23. Look there within the, this whole great list of ways we can grow and be in the Spirit. And you look there across this list, and it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, on suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, against such there is no law. We need to be sober. We need to be righteous. We need to be godly. If we want to be godly people, we can look to passages such as 2 Peter chapter 1 and verses 5 through 8. We can see that great list of how we can add to our faith, how we can grow, how we can, can improve, how we can become more fruitful. 
We as children of God, we need to learn from the grace of God and realize that salvation is available. We need to realize that denying ungodliness and lust is something we must do as Christians. But we also must see that we must live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. But here's something we need to look, look to or look forward to. We need to look for Christ, our hope. You see, as we live in this present age, we're living this godly life, we need to look forward. Looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. There in Titus chapter 2 and verse 13, it says this, Looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We need to look forward. Look forward to Christ's return. And be ready for it. You see, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 10, those foolish virgins, they were not ready when the bridegroom came. We need to be ready. We need to be looking forward to that because he's our hope. And our hope is sure. Our hope is secure. We need to realize when, in John chapter 14, verses 1 through 6, when Jesus said he's coming back, that he is. And we need to believe that. And believe it so much that we're willing to put in the work and put in the effort to be more like him each and every day. Realizing that he truly is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no one will come to the Father except through him. The grace of God teaches us about that assurance and that conviction we can have in Christ Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 we see what faith is. We see that faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Do we still have the same conviction that we used to have? Did we ever have it? The Word of God is where we need to turn because when we have that assurance and we have that conviction, we can truly look forward to Christ and know that He's our hope. But see, our hope is not like this world defines hope. Our hope is alive, and our hope is living, and our hope is perfect. Our hope is that living hope we talked about in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 3, where it says, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We are people that live looking forward to a living hope. To the living hope that we have in Christ Jesus and that hope that we have, that surety we have, that he will return. As we close tonight, I want us to, to remember just two quick things. First, let's remember what, what God has done for us. When we look in Titus chapter 2 and verse 14, it says, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. We need to remember. We need to remember that God has redeemed us, that he has saved us, that he gave himself for us for our sins. We need to remember that in Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 11, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. We need to remember, like pastors like Mr. Gary shared this morning, like in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, where we, as we're buried into Christ, have the opportunity now to rise and walk in that new life. That just as Christ was buried in that grave, that we were buried, that old man, and now we have the opportunity to be new. Jesus did that for us. Jesus gave us that opportunity. He redeemed us. He purified us. He made us his own special people. Think about Acts 2 and verse 47 where it says that the Lord you know, added, added daily to the, to the church. Those who were being saved. That God is the one that did the adding. And who did he add them to? He added them to his church. Now if you look back in chapter 14, of, 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 uh, verse 14 in Titus chapter 2, it says what? It says his own special people. Well, that reminds me of 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. That we are that chosen generation. That we are that royal priesthood. We are his special people. 
We need to remember that about our God. And as we remember that, we need to tell other people. We need to speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority, and let no one despise you. Titus chapter 2 and verse 15. See, here in the book of Titus, in, the, in these closing verses of this chapter, we are instructed to several great things, of several things that can help motivate us and strengthen us and encourage us. We can see within this passage that salvation is available, that we as individuals needed to deny ungodliness and lust, that we need to live sober and righteous and godly lives. We need to see Jesus as our hope, as our future, as our surety. We need to be confident, confident in the Lord and know what he has done for us and what he continues to do. And then we need to go out and share that message, just like Titus was instructed to share, to teach that sound doctrine to this world. Tonight, if you're outside of Christ, I hope that you've heard what you need to do to be saved. What you need to do to put your sins away in Christ Jesus. To have those sins washed away in the water and grave of baptism. Tonight, if, you've, if you're already in the church, I hope that you saw some things that we just needed to review and go back over. To cherish maybe a little more deeply. To recognize that our salvation is truly secure because of Christ Jesus. If there's anything we can do for you, whether prayers of the church or tonight you want to put on Christ in baptism, please come as we stand and as we sing. All things are blessed. If you're in the audience tonight and we're not able to attend the morning services, the communion has been um, set up in uh, B1, I believe. You can exit the auditorium at this time so you can be served. Sing the uh, first and last verse and then we'll have our dismissal prayer.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this day, this first day of the week that we were able to come here and hear a portion of your word. We're thankful for being able to come back this evening um, and hear the message from Derek. Um, be with all of us as we prepare to leave this building tonight and return home. We thank you for all the blessings that we that we have. Um, um, we uh, pray for those that were mentioned um, this morning and this evening, those that are in the hospital, those that are, are going through treatments. Um, be with them. Be with all the people and the doctors and nurses that see after them. Um, help us take this message that we learned tonight and apply it to our lives. Help us to uh, go throughout the week and study your word and, and learn from it as much as we can. Uh, keep us safe in the next appointed time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.